Hey everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Well, I'm back at it again and I'm in a late 1800s, they call it a 1900s on the house situation, but we've got these old wood floors that you can see have been covered over with carpet. And being that this has been a rental property, we had some very inexpensive uh, auto show carpet. Now, in the previous years of ownership, you can see where they've added a dark layer on the edge and they always had a rug in the centers of the room. Very common in these old houses. And then unfinished closet space. So rather than put down more carpet, we decided we would go through and restore the beauty of the original floor. So we've got a little work ahead of us with the heat gun. At one point they had like a glue down, um, almost linoleum type product that looked like wood. But we've got this nice tongue and groove wood floor. Um, it's time to restore that to its natural beauty. So I've got a few tools, just like before, screwdriver, gooseneck, uh, all or pry bar and we're going to go ahead and take off all this tack strip and then we'll start doing this with the no sand method of stripping off all this floor. Now a lot of times you find in situations like this when they did the room they just figured we're covering it up it doesn't matter. Well it matters to us and it's going to look beautiful. So you can see this bright yellow right here. This was a Michigan fan for University of Michigan. And the whole room was done in this blue in the 1990s with a fluorescent yellow ceiling and walls. So we've got some paint work to do in here. So I'm going to get done on that what I can, strip the floors and make this place beautiful. Then I'll take the heat gun and start scraping off the stairs, they seem to only have carried this up from downstairs. It's at the landing um, at the very bottom and on the stairs. So a little heat gun work there. And I'm gonna start in on this and see if I can get this done before the end of the day. I found a little bit better method for taking this tack strip off than what I had been doing. So yesterday was real slow going and the sun's come out finally. So this room is gonna be a little more enjoyable to do because we have no heat in the house and it's cold. <laughs> so, back to work. Well, after a lot of sitting and scooting, I got this room all cleaned up from the carpet, tack strips, and staples from the padding. Okay, everybody, we are getting serious about this floor stripping these days. So I'm back at the upstairs of what used to be a rental house. This floor is the original plank wood floor in the entire house. Now I have sanded and stripped uh, previously the downstairs living room. And the problem with renting a sander to do this is lots and lots of the boards. These are probably hand cut. They're very old. They are cupped. So like right here, I don't know if you can see that. It's always high um, at the edge. Now these are all tongue and groove. That means they lock together like, well, I can't really show you. Um, one end sticks out. This one has a groove. It's like a three-way system. So you can look up tongue and groove. Um, maybe I can find a open edge somewhere to show you. Now in some areas of the house, at different points, there has been patches where they had cut in. I don't know why they did that. If it had something to do with electric, if it had something to do... Um, in these old houses, a lot of times the electric was in a floorboard instead of in the wall. Um, there's old air vents that have been plugged. There's really nothing I can do about that except for stick a dresser on top of it. Um, or I can try to find somewhere in an attic 
uh, four boards, five boards, and stagger them to do a patch. That's a good way to do it. Um, you'd need a multi-tool to cut into it. But this is the attic um, closet space, and they never finished the floors. Now, originally in a house like this, they had area rugs in the centers of the room. So let's go check that out. So in this room, you can really tell the difference where they stopped the stain at the edge. They had a big room size rug here that just came out from the edge. You see this a lot in old farmhouses. Um, they just didn't have wall to wall carpet. They had area rugs and at some point, painters have been in here splattering and making a huge mess. So on this particular floor, this whole area of the floor has never been sealed. It's bare wood. And this floor is in, I would say, better condition because of that. So I may be able to just buff sand. They have a sanding pad that is called a screen sander. And it just real lightly goes over um, the whole floor. Now, I don't know if they have that for the rental sander. Um, I'm trying to get done by hand what I can today. So this is what it should look like totally bare. This closet's in the best condition. It's just super. Um, it looks like, so you can see right there, they stained a strip between the two areas. It looks like that they had an area rug in there different areas of the floor have had linoleum, so I've been scraping them up. I started this project uh, late winter, early spring, and it just got too hot up here to work on it. So things are cooling off. So this is the closet um, upstairs attic where I was talking I could pull some boards out if I need to. It's always a neat little trick to do. But on a previous paint job, they were absolutely messy about it. On another floor, I used this Zep floor stripper. Now this is not made for removing um, stuff from wood floors. It's for like commercial tile, um, hard glazed type floors that it strips the cleaners off. But if you put this on full strength, it works really well. Now my trick is, don't take this whole seal off, just poke some holes in it and sprinkle it on the floor. Scrub it in with a scrub brush, such as that. I've already started to do that in this closet. Normally I would let it wait for 30 minutes, but it had evaporated in the 30 minutes time. So that's why I've waited till this cooler temperature to do that. Now here along the edge, there's what's called quarter round, um, from at some point them adding a different type of flooring. It's this half, it, it's one fourth of a round dowel and they cut it. I've gone along the edge already with a carbide scraper and denatured alcohol. First I tried soap and water and it softened it, but it also softened the wood here because the varnish is so thin and it was really digging in. Um, I tried carbide scraping the surface to do a hand scrape look, and it's okay, but it's slow going. I accomplished one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine and a quarter boards in about two hours of first starting to scrape along the edges. So what I've come up with at this point is I'm using these multi-tools that I use for scraping and painting the house. When you get them new, they're a little sharp on the edge. So I'm going around, anything that is sticking up like this, scrape it off, see if it's food, see if it's paint, get what you can. And this is how I knew that the floors uh, were so cupped, besides doing it previously. It doesn't really want to get the center of the board. Well, you can see there's a test spot it's just so much so where there is thick paint you can see like here here was a glob i just went ahead and scraped it right off the surface uh, this is a very orangey color wood and sanding with the commercial sander the rental sander um, can create quite a bit of dust 
So before I try the floor stripper over these big, big areas, I might as well try to scrape off what I can of these big chunks. So I have this scraper, I have the floor scraper, and both of these, um, no, the carbide scraper and the floor scraper both have handles, so you don't really have to be on your knees. I do have knee pads for that. This scraper is a carbide scraper with a replaceable blade. It's very strong, and this is what's really taking it off. I tried it wet. I tried it with natured alcohol. I tried it with the floor stripper. And honestly, dry seems to be best. But keep in mind, this is taking the varnish off of the top surface. So I will probably still have to buff sand um, the whole thing when I'm done. My goal today is to get as much paint off as I can. I am not going to go through excess mm, sanding pads if I don't have to. Today I've got time and the rental place is busy. It wasn't available and they didn't have a helper to haul it. Now if I do this two-handed and really apply pressure here in a push pole, it really comes off fast. So I've been working at this for a while and I just wanted to show you the progress I've made just in the time that it took me to go scraping around with my carbide scraper here. Now keep in mind I used um, the floor stripper previously right in this area and it was too warm. On the other floor that I did this before, it was oak, and this is probably spruce, uh, northern pine, something like that, old pine, very open, um, like, flesh or skin of the wood. It's not, like, super smooth like you would expect a really hard wood, so it's absorbing the yellow uh, Zep floor stripper really well. Just look at how much paint I got off from doing little things. Now, first what I'm doing is I'm soaking the floor with this. I don't want it to get dry, but if it gets a little dry, it's okay. I've got a scrub brush with just some uh, soap and water here. And I was going around scrubbing each section. So I divided this into three different sections so you can see the degree of wetness. You know, this has been in maybe an hour. The best thing I can tell you is put some earbuds on, open the window, ventilate, ventilate, ventilate. Don't do this if you're pregnant. Hire the neighbor kid to do it. Um, as old as this is, you know, you don't know what it uh, is on the floor. You can get the lead-based test kits. Um, at the hardware store and again Mr. Sandless is in our neighborhood and he can come and do it for you for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, this I think was $12, $18 a jug. Um, I am using it full strength like I had said before so pour it on, scrub it with the scrub brush over and over and over and that is loosening the polyurethane, loosening the polyurethane um, on the top layer. They don't seem to have coated this with a stain. Um, possibly, maybe it's just darkened with age. I'm getting down to bare wood just from this. See this color difference? It's amazing. So in the areas where there was really bad paint, I hit it more with um, scrapers, scrub brush, anything I could. I went along the edges. So I scrapped the alcohol. Um, it's denatured alcohol. This is a little harder to do in this area because of the wood going this way. Um, the length of the wall with a board going this way has gone really well. So I'm actually making some progress now and it's time to um, get my knee pads back on. Save your knees. If you don't have knee pads, put down some layers of cardboard, uh, some old towels, um, tape them to your knees with duct tape and scoot yourself around and just work in an area at a time. So I'm going to scrub brush this. I'll go over any areas with any thick paint. 
with any combination of scrapers that is necessary. And then in the end, I think I will be able to just buff out um, any leftover paint once it's dry. But be aware that on an old house like this, the scrapers when the floor is wet really is digging in. So use caution with that. You don't wanna damage the floor. I really didn't like how much um, waste I was getting off of this top layer from doing that. But it's looking better. It's gonna make the whole house look lighter. Um, I don't look forward to having to do the entire house, but I do, I'm gonna have to do it. So once you have a method, it starts going pretty quick. This next two sections here only took me about an hour because I'm not doing anything in the edges. The center of the room will go much faster. So I'm real happy with the progress that I'm making here. I'm gonna knock out one more section for the night. I advise you do this job after you've painted the walls and before you've done your baseboard trim because there is no good way to protect that baseboard trim. The dirty rag touches it, the splatters touch it, but this is making some great, great progress. So today I decided to really get after it and get really aggressive and put in lots of hours on this floor. I finally got that like rubber back to linoleum off and it took soaking it in this Zep cleaner. It took my floor scraper, it took my um, multi-tool paint scraper, it took my carbide scraper. I pulled every scraper out of my hat to get that off. I had tried it with the heat gun before and it had just melted it and made a mess. You can see how it's kind of jumpy and skippy. I'll hit this with a light sanding coat, but let me show you how the rest of the big room upstairs turned out. I'm gonna be starting into that room across the hall tomorrow, but I went all through here today. That's why it's still different colors, drying out. I want it to dry really good before I do any sanding because this wood gets extra soft um, when it's wet. But you can see right here, I went along. I really treated those edges separately and then went back over the rest of the wood. This is probably the most discolored right now because it's where I finished last. And it's probably been an hour since I moved to the hallway. I decided to go ahead and hang my doors back up now that um, the door won't be in the way of cleaning the door frame at all so that it would be out of the way. I really don't want to change the doors so much. Um, and I'm not gonna get into stripping all of them. That other door project is still going on in the other room. But just look at the difference here from the beginning of the video in this room to what I have. So I think the best solution for me is either gonna be wood bleach, antiquing oil with linseed oil over the top. It's a good go-to finish without leaving a super shiny coat and letting it still look like a um, hardwood antique floor. But I just love how it turned out. And so far, this is all sandless. So if you're interested in the final of what these floors are going to turn out, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and you'll know um, when it all comes out. I will put this in the um, home repairs video section. It's a good playlist to go through and watch things that you like to watch. So until then, hit that playlist. You can see back in the history where I redid the oak floors in this same method. It's a great way of restoring your floors and saving some money. Just look at how much better this turned out with no paint on the floor. I just love it and it's well worth the time. It is physically demanding. It's very warm. Use the window fan, ventilate, 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 just like I said. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.